Today is day 274, and we're reading from the three Gospels, Matthew 3, Mark 1, and uh, Luke chapter 3. Great and exciting details emerge on the early life of Jesus. He's now 30 years of age and recognizes there's a tremendous span here between what we last read yesterday when he's but a child. And so there's a great deal of information that we just are not privileged to. He arrives on the scene in the shadows of John the Baptist. John is called of God. The mark of God is upon him. The prophets have foretold about him and, and identify him as a forerunner who would point the way to the coming Messiah. He, John the Baptist, is preaching the kingdom of God. It's an interesting word because it's one of which he preaches and then Jesus begins his earthly ministry by preaching also this kingdom. His message is hard. He's, he's, uh, it's a message of repentance. Um, he warns of a wrath to come uh, if they dismiss or uh, refuse to respond to their, uh, their life of rebellion against God. Uh, John the Baptist is a rough and a crude man. There's uh, no miracles, no signs that are following after uh, this one who is highly called of God. Um, John the Baptist calls for a true uh, fruit of repentance as it's put in the scripture. In other words, there has to be visible action. There has to be evidence that's not more than just lip service. There has to be deep uh, repentance. Jesus then arrives and after this uh, holy baptism, he moves to the forefront of uh, what we read about in the scriptures. John points to Jesus and refers to him as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is great and is, is incredibly significant because he's identifying Jesus uh, as the one promised and foretold uh, in the scripture. He makes a distinction though in the baptisms that John says, hey, listen, I came and I'm, I'm baptizing with water of, of, unto repentance, uh, calling men and women to repent of their sins. Uh, but Jesus, he says, is going to be baptizing with a baptism of fire. And, uh, and, and while there's this aspect of the fire being uh, the stirring or burning uh, heart for God, the things of God, obviously he's dealing with a deep baptism that will radically transform a person's life and it's going to burn up all the worthless because he deals with this uh, chaff and that that's going to be burned up and then the true good fruit is going to be put into the barn. Uh, so Jesus comes then to John the Baptist to be baptized. Uh, John resists. He, he almost is embarrassed by uh, his awareness of who Jesus is and that he would ask him to baptize him. He says, hey, listen, I ought to be baptized of you. But Jesus says, hey, it's going to have to happen to fulfill all of the prophets had foretold. And so John baptizes Jesus. And the Gospel of Luke says that while Jesus prayed, in other words, as Jesus is being baptized, he actually is praying. And as he prays, the Bible says here that the heavens open. And uh, uh, he saw the Spirit descend visibly uh, upon him like a dove, and that he heard the voice. So in other words, I would say that uh, these, this was something that Jesus saw. Now, we don't know if anybody else did, but the language of the personal pronouns would suggest that Jesus for sure heard this voice. We don't know if John did, don't know if anybody else, but because it specifically says that he heard this was a confirmation for Jesus. Certainly must have been an unforgettable moment to hear the Father saying to Jesus, hey, you are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Immediately, uh, Jesus is thrust into the earthly ministry. He preaches, like John, the gospel of the kingdom. He warns that the kingdom of God is at hand. He calls for repentance and to believe uh, he uh, calls for fishermen to a radical abandonment. I mean, it's remarkable. It goes up to fishermen, obviously. Uh, this is something that he'd been praying about, and he's calling men to follow him, and he's going to change them from an occupation of fishing for fish to fishing for men. And uh, interesting enough, 
uh, they immediately respond to the call and leave everything uh, to follow Jesus. People are stunned at the teaching of Jesus, his preaching. Um, they identify this distinction of Jesus as preaching with authority uh, and different than what they have been used to hearing from the religious leaders. They, um, he confronts demonic uh, forces. Uh, it, it, the power of God rests upon Jesus. It's confirmed. Uh, he's ruthless as he deals with. Uh, recognizing these are not people that are resisting or rebelling or of sicknesses, but it's the spirit behind it. So the demons, though, know Jesus, and uh, they try to oppose Jesus. And uh, but they they uh, said specifically, "We know who you are, um, the Holy One of God," and uh, trying to obviously bring this out. And Jesus commanded them to be silent. He told them to shut up, and they could not speak. This demonstrates the incredible authority that Jesus had over the demonic forces. The fact that the demons knew him uh, really points back that they knew where he was from, that they had somehow had associations with him prior in heaven because Jesus has always been, and no doubt in the rebellion, when a third of the angels fell, uh, they knew who this Jesus Christ uh, was personally, and now they're saying, we know who you are, but they had to obey Jesus. And uh, the Bible tells us that Jesus healed many. And we see a dynamic pattern, uh, in fact, the, a discipline of Jesus, because it says that he would rise early, he would go out to a solitary place, and he would pray. Uh, what an affirmation to all of us that if this Jesus, the Son of God, felt the compel that he was compelled to go out and seek the Father, pray intimacy with the Father, how much more we, the children of God, uh, need to make sure that this is a discipline in our life. All of this is an introduction to the marvelous ministry and life of Jesus.